Thank you for joining me today. We're going to pick up right where we left off yesterday. Yesterday we looked at Elijah telling Obadiah, go tell Ahab, I want to talk to him. And they meet, and Ahab accuses Elijah of being the troubler of Israel, but Elijah assures him, in fact, that Ahab himself had been the troubler of Israel because of the false religion that they were conducting, that he was doing and he was promoting. And so today we're going to look at the account on Mount Carmel itself. Today's hymn is the hymn, Abide With Me. Abide with me, fast falls the eventide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless soul abide with me. You know, to think about this hymn, and of course, we know what Elijah is going to do. We we mentioned it yesterday or the day before when Jezebel threatens his life. And Elijah is going to run for the hills, frankly. And let me let me quickly quickly look. One of the things that Elijah says when he's on that mountain, and this is this is first Kings chapter nineteen. When you have the the fire and you have the wind and you have, I believe, the earthquake, if I remember correctly. We'll study that here in a day or two. But he says, this is, cha this is verse 14 of chapter 19. It says, I alone am left and they seek to take my life. You know, Obadiah had told Elijah, I've hidden a hundred of the prophets. Fifty to a cave. I fed them, gave them water. Elijah, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but I guess my point in, in the hymn is what made me think of it. I can understand why Elijah, because we know Obadiah says that, and we know what the Lord is going to say in chapter 19. I've reserved, what is it, 7,000 that have not bowed the, bowed the knee to Baal. Yeah, 7,000. Well, if I was if I was Elijah, I would be thinking, where are they at? <laughs> because they're not up on Mount Carmel. I'm up there. You haven't told them to go talk to Ahab. You told me. Those prophets that Obadiah spoke about, they're hiding in a cave. The seven thousand that haven't bowed the knee to Baal, I'm okay. It would be very easy to feel all alone on Mount Carmel. But the Lord was with him. And so I thought the hymn was fitting. When other helpers fail and comforts flee. Help of the helpless, O oh, abide with me. Let's look at our passage now. Pardon me for ranting for a little bit or going on for a little bit about that idea. But as I said, verse 18, I have not troubled Israel, you and your father's house have. So, verse 20, Ahab sent for all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together on Mount Carmel. Elijah says, how long will you falter between two opinions? You might notice again, verse 22, I alone am left of a prophet of the Lord. So Elijah, and you have this this contrast. Elijah tells the prophets of Baal, we're going to have two sacrifices, and we're going to see which one. We're going to see who's God. We're, we're going to see who's God reveals themselves. And so they prepare their sacrifice. They do all their things. They start cutting on themselves. They start dancing all around. Right? They, they're crying aloud late into the day. 
But there was no voice, no one answered, no one paid attention. And then Elijah said to all the people, Come near to me. So all the people came near to him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Elijah took twelve stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Israel shall be your name. Then with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench around the altar large enough to hold two seas of seed. He put the wood in order, cut the bull in pieces, and laid it on the wood, and said, Fill four water pots with water, pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. So they do it. Second time, third time, water runs all around the altar. He also filled the trench with water. It came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. Okay. And the Lord, needless to say, heeded the voice of Elijah. Now let's back up. Let's make a few points. So all the people came near to him, and he repaired the altar. He repaired the altar. You know, a lot of folks are in the deconstruction business. And uh, by all means, if things need to be torn down, they need to be torn down. Gideon tore down an idol that was at home. That idol needed to be torn down. One of the wonderful things in, um, in a few of the king's life, I can't remember if it's Josiah or Hezekiah, maybe in both. But you know, in a lot of those kings, it talked about how the high places remain, but with maybe in Hezekiah. Tear them down. Tear them down. If things need to be torn down, they should be torn down. But you know, someone had torn down the altar of God. Whatever altar this was, someone had torn it down. And you don't tear down that which is good. You don't tear down that which is holy. A lot of folks, they want to deconstruct that which is good and holy. And you know why. They want to deconstruct that which is good and holy so they can build the modern day bales. They want to deconstruct the church so that they can build something else. Well, Elijah, there he is, and he repairs that which is good and holy. That's the first thing. Then he takes 12 stones according to the tribes of Israel. That's interesting, because what time are we living in? Not we ourselves, but Elijah. It was the time of the divided kingdom. It was the ten and two. But that's, that's not how it should have been, was it? No, it's the twelve tribes. It's Israel. It's Israel. And so... He takes twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Israel shall be your name. You remember where that, what verse 31, what that's referring to? That's referring to when Jacob had sent Rachel and Leah and all the children over. It's before the Esau account. And there Jacob was, and a man wrestled with him that night. And man said, let me go. And Jacob said, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. And the Lord said, no longer shall you be called Jacob. You shall be called Israel. Twelve stones. What did those stones look like? No tool. No tool was to be used on them. If a tool was used on them, it profaned them. They would be unholy. Elijah, as all this is happening, and he says, came to pass, there in verse 36, Elijah comes near and says, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. At your word. He put the wood, and granted, I believe the word is 
12 stones. He built an altar. He put the wood in order. You might think about these ideas. He put the wood in order, and he took those stones, like I said, couldn't use a tool on them. And he's doing all these things, and he's doing these things at God's word. If we aren't doing things at God's word, then we are not doing them in faith. We can say we are, but in actuality, we're just listening to ourselves. We're doing what we want to do. And there are a lot of folks in Israel doing what they wanted to do. And that's Ahab, and that's Jezebel, and that's all those prophets of Baal. And that's Israel itself, frankly. And it's time for them to choose. Time for them to choose. So there Elijah is, on the mountain. The sacrifice is ready. And Elijah calls out to the Lord. And we're mindful of our hymn, Abide With Me. Fast falls the eventide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless. Oh, abide with me. And if the Lord abides with us, that's all we need. Appreciate you. Hope you have a good day. Join us tomorrow for another portion of our daily praise.